Back, back, back. Minute work. So this is my rear switch panel for the, uh, this runs off the vehicle alternator. On the other side, I'm gonna have a, ma a matching panel that's gonna be off of our auxiliary. So uh, right here, we've got our wireless router. So if, you've, if you subscribe to us, we should be able to post some streaming videos while we're up on the trails and um, keep you guys informed of what we're doing along the way. And I've got my GoPro battery charger here all wired into this. Uh, this is our fridge plug right here. Right now this will be moved to the other side when we get the auxiliary battery finished. Um, yeah, it's about all we got back here. It's a pretty simple setup. I tried to keep it as simple and unbreakable as possible. Land Rover, Range Rover, if you're watching this, we've got uh, a situation here. Brandon has decided that he's gonna drill a hole through his firewall in order to mount his red arc and run all the wires through. But because there's no predetermined hole and he's having to figure out where he wants to put it, this decision has lasted about 13 days. Um, we, we hope to have it solved by the time we go on the trip in September, which is six weeks away, but uh, the chances are looking slim. This has become a dire situation and we need you to rethink your engineering in the future to where there's a pre-drilled hole or maybe, which would be even better, maybe some wires that come through the firewall that we could just attach to like <coughs> Ford. Ford trucks do. It's an idea. Hashtag Land Rover. Hashtag Ford. Hashtag Brandon's taking forever. So we're going to run this Red Arc DC to DC battery charger here. So this should provide 25 amps uh, from my main battery to my auxiliary battery, which is here on the floor. And we're going to mount this right here. And it's going to keep it topped up from the engine and the alternator while it's running. And then there's a solar input on it as well. We're going to rock a solar panel up on top there. That should give us about five to seven amps charging via solar, and then this thing will provide tw up to 25 from the alternator. And then, I'm gonna run this eight gauge wire from right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get ballsy. I'm gonna drill a hole in the firewall of a Land Rover, something that's supposed to be able to go underwater, and I'm gonna trust that my work is as good as a British uh, engineer. So anyway, we're gonna run this to the back. This is some eight gauge power wire. I might run some more of it to the back for running my, we've got a uh, 66 liter dual fridge sitting over there on the floor, as well as all the other accessories, switch panels, light bars, all the other good stuff you put on an Overland vehicle. So I think that should, uh, just take care of it. Hashtag Alan Stout, hashtag shower systems, hashtag are you done yet? Are you done yet? Trying to find a spot to uh, to drill the hole through the firewall, which terrifies me on a Land Rover. You're through. Can you see it over there, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look real round though. On this side, you drill through like an angled piece, so the hole is like real oblong. I don't know how you're going to seal it. I take a. With lots and lots and lots of RTV. <laughs> hey, oh, hey buddy. Hey, hey, hey. He's on camera. Right there, uh, you yeah. can't. I got to drain it so I can put the heater in it. Ah. Yeah, now it's time my truck's all wet. Ah. Let me 
kill that, that one. That was at least five minutes of water. That's air. And that was it. 30% capacity. If everybody wow. just washes their vitals. Yeah. Just wash your job. Like four showers. <laughs> I'm very vital. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. whole my whole body. How do you think I keep this up? Like downward? Yeah, like when the trunk's open like this, yeah. or the truck's open. Yeah. I'll have one right here and then one right here so it like lights up this whole area. Hey Robert! Yeah. You want a 34 degree water? Holy shit. So what we're doing is we're taking solar heat energy from the sun yeah. and converting it to super cool energy for our fridge. Here, have a 34 degree water, sir. This is cooled by the sun, my friend. I'm surprised this isn't frozen. It's pretty cold. Yeah, 30... What, the, uh, what is it? 30 34. Is, 32 is freezing? Yeah. Something? Man, that's great. Yeah, so we're taking the heat from the sun and yeah. making our waters cold. Wow, that's great. Yeah, Snowmaster. Big shout out to Snowmaster. This won't be the final uh, install, but this is our, our test and we're gonna it put seems it to be working fine. I don't know yet. I've got to figure out the rest of my pack out. Uh -huh. And then once I know my pack out, then I'll figure out where this needs to go. But, yeah, that's great. Yeah. What do you got there, Brandon? Got a 95 liter Snowmaster fridge or freezer. This is the single door one we got, as opposed to the double door that we already had. Got some cables and then the little remote. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Lots and lots of room for stuff in here. It looks like we got three, yeah, three shelves, it looks like. Put a lot of beer in this. Or food or milk or yogurt, you know, anything that you want to keep cold. Nice little uh, protective cover here. What does the wiring look like coming out of it? So, we've got the close here. It's your standard, I think it's called a NEMA computer plug. You can get anywhere. Probably got a thousand of these laying around. The other one is one of these two prong, looks like what you use for an Xbox or a PlayStation actually, and then a 12 volt outlet on the other side. What we've seen is you can actually cut the 12 volt off right here and then if you like an Anderson power pole or a big Anderson or anything you really want. Uh, but it's just standard 12 volt and it plugs in over here in the front. See so if we can get it down here, it's, it's still in the packaging so. Ted. Plugs in down there. And it's designed to run with a bag on it and seems to work pretty well. They cool extremely. One cool. of the options we have with the Snowmaster refrigerators, um, the Expedition series is the series we're using. So we've got a 85 and a 95. And they, they don't draw much, so they're very capable of being run through the cigarette lighter, which is the way this vehicle is running its fridge, which unfortunately isn't in at the time. But the, um, the other way you can do it, um, on some of our other vehicles we're building battery boxes, is to take this, snip it off, and then install an Anderson power pole. And then we can show you later how we're gonna connect that to the battery boxes. So it's as simple as the scary, scary thought of snipping this off and getting rid of it. Pull your two wires apart. Your nail beds will be very angry with you, but that's the cost of doing business. Any wire strippers will work. We use these Klein tools from Home Depot. They seem to work pretty well. I've used them for, for years for wiring stuff. And then these are the Anderson power poles. So they're just like the big Anderson plugs that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, and basically this crimps onto the wire, sticks in, and then these can then snap onto a power distribution block, which uh, we've got a few of coming. They should be here today, pending there's no earthquakes or tornadoes or other natural catastrophes that mess up Amazon. Crimp on your heads. As easy as that. And then make sure you always put power with power. Uh, I have a habit of not doing that. I also have a habit of being electrocuted. So um, let that be a lesson to you.
Don't don't do it. Once they're in, as long as the wire sheathing isn't cut below, you don't have to worry about using any heat shrink because there's no capacity for it to touch anything else. And you have now just created a plug that goes from Anderson power pole distribution block to your refrigerator.